Welcome to Paris-Roubaix 2021. Two and a half years after Philippe Gilbert took victory in the velodrome, the Hell of the North finally returns and it promises to be a spectacular 118th edition. For the first time in almost 20 years, the riders will have to contend with the rain and the mud as they cover 258 kilometres between Compiègne and Roubaix. There are 55 kilometres of cobbles split into 30 sectors. They'll hit the stones after nearly 100k, winding their way to the first five-star sector, the famous Trué d'Arembert. It's then into the decisive final 50k through Mont saint pavel and on towards the Carrefour de l'Albe before reaching the Roubaix Velodrome. Only the strongest and the most skilled riders will survive. Yeah, big battlefield, I guess, and really long final. Uh, always important to, uh, to be in the front, so I think that suits me. I had a short preparation for Worlds and I hope um, yeah, that that race uh, gave me some extra strength uh, for tomorrow. C'est un parcours que j'adore. Quand on va voir la météo, euh, ça va être incroyable. Il faudra avoir beaucoup de chance et couvrir très intelligemment et avoir la technique aussi. I mean, the, the condition is really good. Uh, Paris Roubaix, of course, a special race. Uh, a lot can happen, and especially with this weather. So, uh, yeah, we go definitely here uh, for the win. There was a fast and furious start with plenty of big names on the attack. Matteo Trentin got into the first move, while former winners Greg Van Avermaet and John Tegenkolb also tried their luck, but they were all brought back in. The riders powering through the first hour at almost 50 kilometers an hour, as a group of 30 then went clear after 45k. There were three from Gilbert's Lotto Sudal team, for Mish, Sweeney and Van der Sander, Oss from Bordeaux Hansgrohe, Ballerini and De Klerk for the Koenig Quickstep, and three from Jumbo Visma, Affini, Rosen and Van Hoydonk. There were also strong men like Van Avermaet, Skuyens, Moscon and Rowe, plus the Alpecin Fenix sprinter, Philipsen. They had nearly two minutes in hand before the first cobbled sector, with the weather already starting to play havoc with a few riders' chances. Oh, another crash! And it's a Group Armour rider right on the front again, on the front of the peloton, his first to fall. And they were just leading in, and that's twice the Group Armour riders have hit the deck on the front of the peloton. And here we go, Hannah. This is the first sector at Troisville à Anchy, and the Pave starts. After the first four sectors, four men had opened up a gap at the front. Florian Vermeer from Lotto Sudal, Luke Rowe from Ineos Grenadiers, Niels Eckhoff from DSM and Maximilian Valscheid from Hubega Next Hash. The main peloton of favourites was now almost three minutes back as the 2018 winner went to ground. And a number of different riders are down again. Peter Sagan has crashed. Taking a look where this uh, this crash happened. Ooh. Another rider, just see how much standing water. Oh, no, no, no. On sector 24, four became two up at the front. Rowe was distanced and Valscheid crashed for Mirsch and Eckhoff pushing on. In the main group, another former winner, Dagen Kolb, took a tumble, while defending champion Gilbert was briefly distanced as a few riders began to up the tempo. Wat van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel still in this main group. Well, mechanical issues are never far away on Paris-Roubaix. Some improvisation here from Christophe Laporte after a problem with his brakes. Van Avermaet's expression said it all. With the Arenberg Forest looming, Sonny Colbrelli almost slipped off his bike. Van Aert and Kasper Asgren increasing the pace as the gap dropped to under two minutes. The Arenberg Forest, five-star sector, and this is where the race really starts. Let's just take a look at what happened here. How Wout van Aert avoided that, which was directly in front of him. I don't know Incredible. how he missed it. Superb bike handling from Van Aert, but he was briefly distanced. Mathieu van der Poel surging clear with Cole Brelli, and Van Aert only caught up in the following sector, number 18. Up at the front, Vermeersch and Eckhoff were joined by members of the original breakaway, as Cole Brelli looked to bridge across with Boivin, Plancart and Le Cour. Only a minute now separating these front three groups before a bit of a lull, but there would be more action on sector 15 as Van der Poel made his move. 
Mathieu van der Poel has decided that it's time to go. Van Aert unable to follow his eternal rival van der Poel, who was clearly a man on a mission. The Dutchman joined by the Canadian champion Boiva and the European champion Colbrelli as they hoovered up riders from the original breakaway. Van der Poel urging them on as they made contact with the second group on the road, containing his teammate Philipsen, Van Avermaet and Van der Sander. But there were still three more riders up the road at the front of the race, Moscon for Mirsch and Tom van Asbroek. With 12 cobbled sectors remaining, they had around 50 seconds on the Van der Poel group. Maximilian Walscheid has crashed again, so has Tosh van der Sander and Greg van Avermaet, the previous winner, is down. The first rider to crash was Walscheid. Here is the attack of Gianni Moscon. And Moscon decides that it's time to say goodbye to the rest of the race. Moscon leaving the two Belgians in his wake and forging on alone. For Mirsch and Van Asbroek were soon caught by a rampaging Van der Poel who simply couldn't shake Colbrelli or Boivin. This second group still over a minute behind Moscon. But things began to unravel for the Italian inside the final 30 kilometers. Well, first he was forced to change bikes because of a rear wheel puncture. And it went from bad to worse as he entered the seventh sector. And it's Moscon has crashed. Gianni Moscon hits the deck. After the bike change, the new tires, and Moscon suddenly, having looked good, is on the deck. Moscon held on for a few more kilometers, but the writing was on the wall for the Italian, who was also struggling with his gears. Meanwhile, Boivin went to ground in sector five, ending his prospects. On the last five-star sector, the Café de Lab, Moscon was caught and dropped by Van der Poel, Colbrelli and Fermiche. One of these three debutants would win Paris-Roubaix. As they come into the Roubaix velodrome, a huge crowd cheer them in. Goosebumps for these riders who have never ridden into this Roubaix velodrome in this monument before. Here we go now, this is the sprint. Colbrelli, here goes Vermeesh, he goes high. Vermeesh has stolen a march, and that is a great tactic. He leads out, Colbrelli is there. Van der Poel fights as Vermeesh leads into the banking. Is Florian Vermeesh going to take the victory on the line? It's Sonny Colbrelli, the first Italian victor since 1999. What a moment for Sonny Colbrelli. The 31-year-old has enjoyed the best year of his career and takes the biggest win of his career at Paris-Roubaix. He is the first debutant to triumph here in some 70 years. Well, this is 2021 after all, so we should perhaps have expected an Italian winner. Colbrelli takes it in the sprint from Vermeersch and Van der Poel. Unbelievable. My first Paris-Roubaix and I win, I don't know. I'm very happy because uh, it's, uh, today is a, it's a, a legend of Rubeo, no? <laughs> with, uh, uh, with the rain there and the uh, weather and the start. And attack a 90 case uh, to go after uh, Harenbeck uh, and nothing. And, uh, I, uh, and uh, I follow only Van der Poel in the final. Uh, nothing super and a super sprint. I'm very happy for, for this victory. <laughs> The Italian and European champion leading home 22-year-old Vermeer, who really announced himself to the world today. Van der Poel third, followed by Moscon, while Yves Lampart was the best of the rest. It was an epic edition of Paris-Roubaix, and the good news is that the hell of the north will be back in just over six months' time. So do join us then, and thanks very much for watching.